guys, welcome back to our part two segment of our Christmas edition lead up of our talking about nutrition stuff for this uh, holidays. So pretty much today, uh, as we said in the last video, we're gonna pretty much touch base on some protein, all right? So today's not gonna be uh, a long video like carbohydrates. Carbohydrates was quite a lot to take in for it. So protein's a bit more simple, straight, um, you know, sort of cutthroat, easy, bang, bang, you know? You should get some sound effects in there. Anyway, so I get a bit carried away, you know? Festive season, oh my God. So, um, pretty much protein. Now, again, we're going off the nutritional booklet that we do for our clients in house here. Um, and then we pretty much teach them the, the basic parts of it. Now, with protein, you got to know that there are four reasons to why we want to use it, right? So we're going to have one, two, three, and four. All right, I'm going to go into a bit more depth to exactly why we need, like what happens with these four, right? But just to pretty much break it down, right? It is used for... Tissue repair, right? Now when I say tissue, I mean like a skeletal muscle and like, this, you know, skin the muscle inside, not like tissue, like, achoo, and I need a tissue, you understand? All right, number two. We've got tissue, ah, uh, actually, I won't. All right, all right. We're gonna go with Muscle growth. <clears throat> I've got to get big and jacked and, you know, make my friend Daniels with it. <laughs> you know, it was a bad joke. It was a bad joke. But anyway, so we've got tissue repair, muscle growth. Third one is... We've got feeling of satisfaction. All right, project actually keeps us full out here and there. And then the last one is, drum roll please. All right, this is a, a boost of your metabolism, all right? So now we're gonna pretty much, I'm gonna take this off and we're gonna go into a nice, quick, easy little um, breakdown of each one and what they will mean. <laughs> all right guys, so as you can see, I'm drawing something very artistic. It's meant to, Look a little something like this. So there's a bit of a close up there. But that's what we actually print out in our book. So I've just tried to enlarge it as best as possible. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the greatest um, artist <laughs> in the room here. So I'm actually surprised that I got through with this. Normally I'm just doing stick figures and stuff like that. So it's, um, it's pretty, pretty cool. But the reason why this is up here because it's gonna come into effect pretty much uh, later on when I get to more important parts and stuff like that, I thought it would just be a bit easier because this next sort of strand, I'm not gonna lie, there's not much in terms of me to writing up notes, it's just me telling you information. So please make sure you have pen, paper, your notes on your phone opened up or somewhere along the lines where you can actually document and write down some notes. So um, the first point that we're gonna uh, talk about is uh, tissue repair. So with the tissue repair, the reason why we need uh, protein is obviously because protein in our diet helps rebuild and repair our skeletal muscle tissue. So the reason why it helps uh, repair and stuff like that, because we've actually been knowing, um, when you actually exert an external force on the body, so for example, say I've got some nice weights and I, uh, uh, I lifted up weights here and there, um, what's gonna be happening is you're gonna be creating these, uh, what's known as micro tears in your actual muscle fiber. Now, you're probably thinking like, oh God, no, we're, these tears, I'm creating tears and stuff. No, we're not talking about like an injury tear, like a grade one, two or three and stuff like that. These are micro tears. This is what is used for pretty much to just grow the muscle and develop strength and go about. Even like picking up a water bottle, guys, like picking that up off the shelf, you'll still create little tears in your sh shoulder muscle in order for me to pick it up and stuff. So anytime there's a contraction in the muscle with like an, another small weight, you know, even you walking, 
going insane and out scene, right? You're creating those little tears and stuff in the quad muscle and stuff as you're going. So obviously we need something to repair that. But because I keep saying tear, I know you guys are freaking out, going, oh my God, I'm tearing stuff, what's going on? No, time out, calm down. This is where the diagram is gonna come into play. So pretty much here we have our blue bone, which bones are normally white, so don't disregard the color, but obviously <laughs> we've got to be a bit artistic. So we've got the bone here. Obviously, attaching our big ass muscle over here is tendon, right? So our tendons is what attaches to the bone. It's what we make that movement. So then, ideally, the muscle is into three layers, right? So we've got our epimyosin, which is that outer layer. Then we've got inside is the perimyosin. So you can probably see those little circle dots there because it's that little broken down like layer. And then, one of those then expands out to what's known as the endomyosin. Right? Then within the endomyosin, that's where we have our muscle fiber. So it's sort of like, picture like little cylinder tubes and stuff, and it's like smaller tubes, and then inside a bigger tube, then inside a bigger tube, you know, and it becomes that. Again, it's, well, back to this sort of little diagram. So just picture like all the little like vessels and stuff inside there, and it just sort of builds up. So with that there, these uh, tears actually happen yeah, I'm trying to draw it as best as possible, but it's literally a tiny muscle fiber. It's a single muscle fiber. Now, guys, normally with like the body and stuff like that, this muscle fiber, I know I've drawn it like in larger scale and big, but really in real life, what it looks like, what I want you to go, guys do is literally just pluck out one of your hairs, split your hair into half, and that is how thick a muscle fiber is, all right? So we're talking gut, like thick, like, Oh, like if I was even was the, you would, camera wouldn't even pick it up. So, obviously we've got billions of these in our body because what makes up the whole skeletal muscle and stuff like that. Now you can't grow muscle fiber, you can only change the thickness of them, hence bigger muscles, whatever. It's the thickness of the muscle. It's not about someone having more muscle fiber in there. Everyone's born with different ones. There's, there's a bit of a sort of a, a mix up in that terminology to like where it goes, but ideally, um, it, you, everyone has X amount and it's the only thickness that you can change. So for guys, the heavier they lift and whatever, and they want to get big and whatever bust, it's because the muscle fibers is actually getting thicker, they're tearing it, they're growing it, it, it expands. That's the way it works. Um, if it's for like females, like turning up here and there, creating less, uh, what you call it, tears here and there, turning, shaping the muscle up differently. It's not about, oh, the guys all of a sudden going from two billion to three billion muscle fibers and oh my god you know he's bigger no it doesn't work that way so from there what we're gonna do is sorry i just went on a tangent of muscle fiber i lost my train of thought sorry. all right so pretty much what's gonna happen is um that's right talk about the little tears and stuff so ideally eating protein and stuff it's gonna help repair these little muscle fiber tears and stuff like that inside your body. That's why, I don't know if you guys remember the triangles. All right, hang on. Take two, guys. I'm gonna draw up these triangles and we'll get it back. You just give me a two second breather, all right? Okay, sorry guys, thanks. Uh, now I've quickly drawn this up here, right? Because this is what's gonna tie in. Now, I sort of just in, in my last explanation of like pretty much talking about muscle fibers and stuff like that and, and the tissue repair, you sort of probably guessed that those are points one and two, right? So your muscle growth, um, tissue repair and stuff, it all ties in together, right? Because obviously you create bigger tears and stuff in the in the muscle fiber in order to create more growth. The protein, it, it repairs it here and there and it grows. And obviously just naturally, if you're like walking throughout the day and like I said, you know, not doing the heavy weights, but you still create those tears and you're still eating protein, it's gonna repair those muscle fibers in there. So that's sort of point one and two taken out. Just what I want you guys to just realize is that with this uh, diagram here, this is why in the morning it's, it's important to have minimal protein, in, in a way, m minimal, like I'm not saying do it on purpose, but it's because if you look at the night before, the night before you would have had your dinner, so you would have been consistent on like high in protein, very minimal carbs and moderate fats. And then the next thing you know is then you end up having a six to eight hour sleep. The body's not moving, you're laying in bed. So that protein source is gonna go around and help repair the muscle and the tissue and everything that is around that needs repairing. So that's why when you wake up, because you've woken up from a nap, like from sleeping, you haven't been moving, there's really no need to have a high 
flux in of protein in. And the reason why, because of all this, um, I'm sort of skipping ahead here, but I'll just tell you now, is that the protein has no storage system. So remember with carbohydrates, how we, we drew the nice little water bottle analogy, and we said, oh, we got a carb storage system. Well, protein doesn't, right? So that's why it's very important that you get the right amounts throughout the day, and so to help repair and do what it has to do. So if I have a really big protein breakfast, well, I'm just waking up, there's really nothing that I've got to do. What I'm going to be doing is finding it very hard to go to the bathroom because everyone knows that protein sort of makes you constipated and hard to go to the toilet. So pretty much what you want to do is have a moderate, small amount, right? So I'm talking like small amounts in like two eggs, guys. Something small, you can make two sauces of toast, throw some avocado on there, have two eggs on top of that, and boom, off you go, perfect, done, deal, easy. And then as the day progresses, that's when you wanna to start to increase. And obviously, like we said, at lunchtime, a 50-50 balance, then in the afternoon, a bit more, because you wanna be tapering off carbs, because carbs get stored, protein isn't, but during the afternoon, your day's been prolonged, you've been walking around, you've been getting this from the office, you've been picking up this, you've been working, laboring, whatever your job description is, you have been moving around and doing it. So then comes the dinner time or you might even throw in the gym workout in the afternoon. Then the next one is literally dinner time and that's when you're having all your protein and the minimal carbohydrates. So obviously engage in fat burning mode and obviously moderate fats, which we're gonna be talking about in part three, the fats, so stay tuned for that, all right? Don't go anywhere. But yes, guys, so that is pretty much the tissue repair and muscle growth really quickly sums up. Um, the third point was feelings of satisfaction is because, again, protein doesn't have a storage system, it's a lot denser and stuff. So I can easily say to you guys, oh, if you go out there and smash down two packets of chips, boom, easy, light, it's all carb based, nothing done. But if I told you to smash down two 250 gram steaks, oh my God, you'll feel so full and pretty much like wanting to throw up because that's like way too much food. But the whole concept and idea of that, what I'm trying to make it. The point across here is that protein is a lot denser, so it'll keep you fuller. So that's why tapering this out, you've got the carbs in the story system. You don't have to constantly feed it, but then at the same time, you just increase it because it's going to help repair and stuff and give you that feeling of satisfaction. All right. So then the, the final point here is just to literally like boost in metabolism. It's quite simple and common. Um, the way it works with boosting in your metabolism is that obviously if you are increasing your um, pretty much muscle density, so your muscle bone here in strength, and the less fat you have on you, the more muscle you have on you, you're naturally gonna spike up your metabolism because the more you're gonna eat protein, it's gonna feel, feel the muscle feed into it and stuff like that, and then boom, 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 it's gonna create this nice, beautiful thermogenic effect, and then pretty much you're just gonna go into some fat burning, and that is it. So uh, pretty much to just sum this off, guys, Obviously, we talk about different types. Everyone knows where to get your different types of proteins from. Uh, so obviously, go to your dietary requirements. I'm not going to push for whatever. Everyone's different from your meat eaters to your white meats to your vegetarians to your vegans to some sort of sproutness. I don't know what else is out there these days. There seems to be a new category coming out every week. So whatever suits you, you know what protein source to go from. It's quite simple and easy. All right, guys, I'm pretty much going to clean this up off the board and we will get ready for our Christmas talk. So i going to give you a few pointers on that, all right? So here we go. All right, guys, so I'm getting pretty artistic here now. I've got the juices flowing, so this is an even bigger tree because I thought we had to get bigger and better. But um, pretty much, guys, over the Christmas break now, what to simply do, especially over like the big Christmas feast and stuff like that, people tend to go a bit overboard, is guys just, again, like we said before in number video number one, was just portion control, right? Two, have a bit of protein on the plate. You wanna make sure that you're having a bit, so that way you are getting that feeling of satisfaction, you are feeling up, and you're not going like too hungry and starving and stuff like that, and wanting to grab all the bad stuff, so it's nicely balanced. Rule of thumb is normally for like guys, like if you're gonna have your main meal, about like two palmfuls uh, of protein. Uh, for the girls, for the females, just have one palm um, sort of on your plate. Fill up the rest with a mixture of like carbs and veggies and stuff like that. But guys, that is pretty much it. There's nothing more to it. If you have a nice, if your plate nicely balanced out, you're gonna get full from the protein in there. It's, you don't wanna have too much and overeat too much on carbs and that's gonna turn into fat and everything like that. So you're gonna have a nice, beautiful, balanced meal, all right? And obviously sometimes like just graze throughout and stuff and get up and walk about like we were talking about in, in the uh, first episode and stuff like that. So just do all that sort of crazy stuff. 
Um, but again, guys, there's part three coming out, so stay tuned for that. Again, thank you so much for watching and tuning into this episode here. Um, that's it from me now, um, from everyone on the team. Um, so pretty much, don't forget to hit that little bell button so you know when the next video is coming up. Subscribe to our channel, tell your friends, family, because you know us, we like to bring all this new content and, and build up nicely and to support you guys. If you have any questions, shoot them through. But stay tuned, part three coming soon. All right, guys, bye.